Hello and welcome to a new video. Uh, I thought you wouldn't mind me uh, doing something a little different from my studio vlogs and discussing my favourite art supplies and my top five favourite art supplies should I say. And if you can see I have my first one it would be uh, mechanical pencils. Uh, so I have the Papermate non-stop twistable HB pencil and so at, like I've said you kind of twist it and the lead comes out. I find these very smooth and very easy to use and just one of my go-to's and then I have this Rilakkuma. This is kind of like an it's a branded uh, Rilakkuma one but they come with just a 0 0.7 lead. This is another variety I have from Tofu Cute and I find cute things to draw with just make me happy and inspire me. And then I have the Colour Eno by Pilot. Again 0 0.7 selection of mechanical pencils here. They all have a different coloured uh, lead inside and they do have different colours other than these but these are just my preferred ones that I use in my art. Um, so you can see I've got greens, two different blues, a purple and a red. Um, and I just find the using mechanical pencils uh, a lot less um, hard to use than having to sharpen them all the time. They're just easy just to quickly pick up. You have the point uh, already there because they don't tend to blunt down as much as a normal pencil does. Um, and I like to have my line art all have kind of one uh, width. I don't know if that's weird or not but that's just my personal preference. Uh, so I'm just doing a few swatches here of the different pencils just to show how they work on the paper. This is just normal printer paper. Um, I would say these kind of off-brand ones that I've picked up are very similar to the Papermate. I say the Papermate actually is a lot more smoother to use. It does blend a lot more. Um, but sometimes I like to utilize a very hard um, lead in my me mechanical pencils for the kind of not smudging. I'm left-handed, so I tend to smudge things quite a lot. Um, and I just really like the ease of using mechanical pencils. And I, I was so happy to find out that they created um, Pilot created these colour Eno pencils which basically just colour mechanical pencils which is my dream um, and I find sketching in colours very creative within my drawings and it gives me a sense of what colours I would like to use um, initially from sketching so I can Sometimes I do a sketch all in one colour and then I will use the fine, like I'll fine liner it and utilise colour after that. Uh, but some of my sketches I always find they work better as a sketch than as a finished piece and utilising these coloured pencils within that um, can really make them pop. Um, and it's just something that I find, well, I think my my brain finds very appealing about sketching in colours. So just an overall I have the paper meat and then the kind of off-brand they are kind of branded but they're branded by a company um, Rilakkuma and then the colour Eno Pilot ones. So I'll just show you I've got a Molly Mork picture that I did a while ago but I used the colour Eno pencils just to get sketch out different colours um, and I call that a finished piece to be honest. Um, I really enjoyed creating this and then I have um, my D&D character and a friend's D&D character that I created um, and I used a mixture of the um, normal toned coloured pencils should I say and the Enos just to create a look that I was going for and then I ended up using this for digital artwork in the end. 
on to the next art supply is a fine liners and I have quite a few here that I've picked out these are all ones that I use regularly so we have the uni pin in a 0.2 it's a nice fine line that one and then I have a 0.8 uni pin which I like to use for, for like a bigger liner detail for my artwork and then I have the Copic Multiliner and this is a different coloured one in wine uh, that one actually was in a scrawler box that my mum got and I've kind of, I don't know if she knows this but I've stolen from that um, <laughs> I have this platinum branded one which I got from Cult Pens now it's mostly written in Japanese so I can't actually remember much of the details on this and the same for this zebra one here uh, they're quite thick brush pens and this one is a Tombow multi liner it's got two different ends there's a grey and a black end and then we have the Mangaka flexible in a brown shade and then we have a Pigma brush by Sakura pen in a brown and a Pigma micron green shade in 0.5 and two Fudenosuke um, pens by Tombow in red and purple and I must say I do love using the colours, the coloured fine liners in my artwork and it's a more recent uh, discovery that I found but I haven't really put them down ever since that uh, so I've got a few swatches just so you can see how the liners work obviously starting with the uni pins I like to have a very fine one and a very thick one and that's kind of my basic necessities if I have more space in my pencil case I do tend to have the ones in between those two as well but most of the time I will always pick up the 0.2 or the 0.8 and then we have the Tombow dual ended one uh, it's very much uh, similar to a Fudenosuke but uh, slightly more flowy I would say <laughs> as a brush um, this one's a lot more chunkier which is the zebra pen I do like to utilize this to add or shade or color in with and the platinum one is also in a similar way I like to use this to color in dark parts of drawings um, and it just flows very well you can get a very fine point and a very thick um, point depending on the pressure you use again with the pigma brush uh, this one's in a very dark brown so when you don't want such a harsh line like black line it's very nice to utilize browns and the mangaka i find uh, a very easy uh, versatile pen to use you can get so many different thicknesses uh, you do have to create a lot of pressure on them but it's good for me who's very heavy-handed uh, with fine liners um, and then we have the Copic which is a 0.3 which is I do really love a good thin fine liner uh, I utilize that a lot for uh, drawing flowers and the Micron 0.5 in green again um, it's just a really good <laughs> fine liner oh I can't even spell Fudenosuke <laughs> But the the red one here, I I really love how uh, lining in coloured fine liner really makes the colours that you utilise afterwards pop. Uh, definitely, if you've got like a certain vibe going colour wise, it's good. And here is just some examples of what I've done in my artwork with just using fine liners. So I utilised, uh, not utilised. I created these kind of doodle art pages based on uh, me and my friends and my mum's kind of world that we've created um, which is uh, kind of a mixture of us and our kind of like fantasy characters and I've utilized a lot of cross hatching and line art with just fine liners and all of the products that I've just shown you now to create this artwork and I have an example of some of my newer drawings that I've done with the coloured uh, fine liner, not that one. <laughs> uh, this one here, this is a good example of utilising this purple Fudenosuke fine liner 
um, to make this kind of the blue and the purple mauve color pop. And if you've seen a lot of my studio vlogs, you'll know that I really love Copics and they are one of my favorite um, art supplies to use in my artwork. I do have quite a few. The, I've just selected a few of my favorite colors that I use. I have two different types. You have the Copic Chow here, which I've got a beautiful lilac here to show you. Um, and I have also got a Copic Sketch. Uh, now the difference in is the Copic Sketch actually holds a lot more ink. Uh, it's also more rectangular in shape, whereas the chows are circular or cylindrical. They both have a chisel nib, as you can see, um, which I do believe the sketch is almost double the price, which makes sense for the amount of ink that you get in them. And they both have... Oh, <laughs> pulled off the wrong end there. Uh, they both have a brush nib, which is my favourite one to utilise. I utilise the brush nib a lot more then I use the chisel. I do use the chisel for a lot more of the kind of block color backgrounds. Um, but yeah, they are very similar pens. The chows are a lot more cheaper, so I have a lot more of them in my collection. I only own about two or three of the sketch markers. And then also I would thought I'd mention the refills. So you can buy uh, re refilled ink to fill them up, which is, something that I think is amazing for alcohol markers and I use them a lot in my work and they do dry up um, if you don't use the correct paper which I don't you can buy sketch paper uh, Copic sketch paper uh, alcohol ink marker paper should I say I don't know what's going on with my voice there um, in they have recently discontinued the big bottles I've just shown you and they have these newer ones. They have a smaller nib to be able to reach inside to fill up. But they, the thing that made me really sad is it's half the amount of ink that you've got in the bigger bottles. Um, so I tried to collect as many of the bigger bottles before they've thoroughly discontinued them and um, I've now started getting a few of the newer ones that I cannot get in the bigger sized ones. Uh, so I'm just going to do a few swatches of the colours that I like, um, like to use in my artwork. And if you, um, I haven't, I don't think I actually have written down the names for each one, but I have shown each marker in each one. So if you are looking at a particular one that you really like, uh, you can always go back and pause it. <laughs> Sorry about that, I didn't really think about that. Um, but yeah, I like to use, I tend to gravitate towards purples and blues and pinks within my artwork. Um, but I've recently started branching out and utilising a few other colours <laughs> other than that. So I've got this Mignognet. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's how I say it. Um, color and this wonderful like aqua green duck blue color which is a nice dark shade um it is running out so i will be buying a refill for this um you might see a few of the ones that i'm swatching here will, uh, are getting a little low on ink but that's only because i use them so much in my art um and also because i use the wrong kind of paper i usually use like a very thick based paper for my art and it just absorbs so much of the alcohol ink into it. Um, whereas when I've utilized the proper alcohol marker paper, uh, they do last a bit longer. Uh, they layer up so nicely together that compared to other branded alcohol markers I've tried. Um, and I just I find even though they are on the higher price point for alcohol ink markers, I just find them so much easier to use in my artwork. Uh, but then that's just my personal preference as well. Uh, and I've got a little example here of some of my artwork utilizing them. Uh, so just a few characters that I've created um, utilizing the alcohol markers. 
Uh, these are pretty much very block colours. I haven't really gone in shading them. Um, and this one's from a previous vlog that you might recognise if you've seen it of Ken from Animal Crossing, but yes. So yeah, Copics, one of my favourites. So my next art supply, which you might have seen from uh, my sketching out, I had the titles there, uh, is Posca markers. Um, and I have a few different colours and different sizes that I utilise in my artwork. So we've got the 5M, PC5M, and then we have this fine line one that I like to use, PC1MR. And then we have a even finer, I wouldn't say this is even finer, but this is the PC1M. And then the PC3M. And I'll be showing you some swatches of these so you can see what the difference is in them. Now, I love utilising Posca in my artwork. It is a little hard to do it within a sketchbook because they do like to chew up the paper. Now, I'm utilising just your bog standard printer paper here, so you'll probably see a bit of um, chewing of the paper. Um, I apologise for that, I could have probably picked a better swatching sheet. Um, but it's, it's working so far. It worked very well for the Copic, so we'll say, but the Poscas and possibly the matte acrylic paints probably not going to work as well. So it's just a few of the colours that I enjoy using. Um, and I just find that the opaqueness that you get straight off the bat with these is what drew me to them when I first started using them. And also the fact that you can use them in so many different um, products, like you can use them on like glass, wood, canvases, whatever basically. Um, as long as you have a sealant for it, they'll last a while as well. Uh, I've used them on clay, clay pins. Uh, I've utilized them to add a layer over the top of an art piece that I've done to create shines on the hair and glitter in the eyes um, and yeah I just really love using Poscas within my artwork and I might not use them all the time but they're always a go-to if I need to fix something as well because they're so opaque that if I accidentally smudge something they're so easy to just get a white Posca and just kind of paint the way, paint away my problems, <laughs> or should I say colour in a way, because they're not exactly a brush, but yeah, so you can see the different um, sizes here. So the top ones are the uh, 5M, and we've got the next one down, which is in the purple colour, that's the 3M, and then we have the 1M here that I'm holding, and the one above it was the fine liner, which is very similar to the 1M. It's just you can get a bit more flexibility with the 1Ms than the fine liners that will only do kind of one line and that's about it. Uh, so I've just written down all the colours and the sizes, just in case I haven't really managed to get that across talking. Uh, but here is an example of some art that I've done. I did this last year. It was just a quick little doodle. I painted a base of acrylic paint down first uh, on my sketchbook just so they wouldn't chew it up and then just overlaid with Posca. And again, I did the same here with this Jackson and Holt drawing. Um, and they have a very nice matte finish to them, which I like. Um, but yeah, they do chew up the paper a bit. Uh, but another medium I've used, like I've mentioned before, is my pins that I create for my shop, Nightshade Nook. Um, and I just find them so easy. They make, they make creating something that could be so messy just so much easier than just getting brushes and having to clean the brushes. You can just whip out your pen, it's already there, give it a shake just to make sure it's mixed up. And you don't need a palette or anything unless you're mixing them and they're just ready to go. 
So here's just a few examples of how I've used them within my art. Uh, these one, the pins look glossy just because I've added a gloss sheen sealant, but the actual Poskas uh, dry at an opaque matte texture. And next up, I've mentioned previously, but my last art supply that I love to use within my artwork is matte acrylic paint. I have two varieties, this PBO acrylic paint with matte as its finish. And then I have the Americana by Deco Art acrylic paint, um, which is also matte, kind of dries a little chalky and it's very opaque. Um, similar to the PBO, they're very similar mixes. Um, and I'm not sure if you can get Americana paints. In the UK, they were a lot harder to come by, uh, which is why I was so happy to find that PBO um, has their own kind of matte acrylic paint. Uh, so once I've run out of Americana, I'll probably be replacing it with the PBO ones in similar colors if they have them. Uh, the white is always a staple for me because I utilize a lot of pastel colors. Um, and also I find yellows and greens within paint are very transparent. Um, even with Posca that I said, they are still the most opaque I've found, but if you add a touch of the white into them, into the mix, as long as you don't mind them being a bit more pastel, uh, it helps with the opaque. Um, it helps make them opaque, should I say. Um, and these paints, I will mention, dry extremely fast. And that can be a brilliant thing and it can also be a downside. I find it absolutely brilliant because I am very impatient. I'm a very impatient person when it comes to artwork. I usually like to get it done as quickly as possible. Um, and I get very f focused in my artwork. So, um, if I don't have something that I can finish quickly, it can take over my mind quite a bit. Um, so having these dry so quickly is such a plus to me, but uh, I would say the downside is, is that if you ever wanted to mix them and create gradients with them, because they dry so fast, it is very hard to quickly swap brushes to try and get the next color down to be able to gradiate, gr uh, create a gradient with them or mix them together on the canvas or whatever you are utilizing them on for. Um, but yeah, you can see already that the top three are all completely dry and you can see the green ones already drying. Now this can also differ in what you are painting on. So say if it's a plastic surface, they'll probably take a bit longer to dry. Uh, that's why when I'm using them, I use them straight out the bottle or I'll put a teeny tiny bit on a palette and just quickly use them there and then um, just because they do dry out so quickly. And I do find that with most matte paints that their drying time is very speedy. And that is a huge plus for me. Um, I do love the matte chalk effect that they add to a piece. Uh, it makes the colour so much more vibrant and pop more than a uh, basic acrylic does. Um, it takes away those streaky marks and lines that you get with the brush as well, which annoys me, but also can create a lot of texture in your artwork, which is probably the sad thing that they take away from. Um, but they're very similar to gouache, I would mention too. Um, but yeah, these are just colours that I enjoy and the mediums that I enjoy and I hope that you enjoyed watching this and it helped you and I will see you in the next video. If you liked it, give me a like and subscribe and I'll see you.